Can you tell me how you get cast in a movie like this? What's the audition process like? Um, so my um, my agent sent me sides. There, there wasn't a script released yet. Um, they were keeping it hush hush. But I got the sides and I read the sides and uh, I was like right away. I was just like, wow, this is this is great. Like I love this character. She's so passionate and she's just such a fighter and she really believes in in in, in what she does and. Um, I was just, right away, I was just completely at all with her, and then... Um, Where the sides from come from? Oh, it was from the, from the script, but you don't get the whole script, you don't read the... Sometimes so was it, set, was it a bunch of different scenes? It was scenes? The scenes from the, yeah, so it was like three scenes from the, from the, from the film, but you didn't see the whole, you couldn't read the whole script. Yeah, yeah. So you kind of got an idea of who, of where it, you kind of got an idea of what Any chance part of the sides were from her, her big moment in the end? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that scene. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, exactly. I could definitely understand why you would go for it. Yes, exactly. Because I was like, I read that, I was like, oh my God. That like, moment almost has its own, like, mini arc to it. Yes. And so that was, I, when I read that, and, and it was interesting to, because I had to actually self-tape to send it to New York. And uh, it was so much fun to with my friend. We like he picked up the camera and was like handheld, and we got really creative with it. It was so it's much very fun. appropriate that way. <laughs> yeah, it had to kind of be. And then uh, Sebastian came to to LA, and I got a call back for it, and and I met with him, and I did the, the whole thing again, and and then I didn't hear anything for two months. I know, and I was completely heartbroken. I was like, oh my God, I really wanted this. And I called my manager, and the manager's like, I think, I think they cast your role, I'm sorry. And I was just like, oh my God. I was like, I really, really want to play this. So I was a bit heartbroken, and then two months pass, and I get a call, and out of the blue being like, um, Sebastian would love to talk to you. Can you read the script? And he would love to talk to you later today. I was like, oh my God. I even like, get chills just like, talking about it. I was like, oh my God, okay. Um, I ran home and I started reading the script. I was just like, oh my God, 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 <laughs> you know? And then I got to the end and I spoke with Sebastian. I was just like, Sebastian, I was like, I really would love to do this part. And, you know, we talked about the character. I'm like, I so understand her. I get her. Like, she's such, she's so full of wonder. And, you know, she's, she's such a newbie on the ship. And, you know, I haven't done many things as far as acting goes. And, 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 and so, I, and like, the, the sense of wonder for her and how much she's passionate about research and discovery and, and science and she's a marine biologist um, and all these elements I was just like I just I just I just understand her and I want to really play her so then the next day at 8, 8 a.m. I get a text message from my manager being like you go to New York it was so amazing what'd you do to celebrate I just start crying I was like oh my god oh my god oh my god it's a good one to get. It was it was great, and then like three days later, I'm on a plane to New York. And then what happens from there? What kind of preparation do you have to do for the role? Did you have to go through like I, I guess like mar marine biology 101? But, well, I, I did camp. that myself. Yeah, no, I did that myself. I bought a bunch of books on oceanography, and I was just like, all right, here we go, you know. <laughs> and so I, I I started to learn the basics of understanding where what she knows, the knowledge that she has. And then I did speak, I asked Sebastian and if I could actually speak to a marine biologist to understand their thinking, their, their, how they live their life, what, what, what is life like for them. And speaking to her, I learned a lot about, you know, um, for her, it's uh, for this woman, basically, being in the water is everything. And she feels safer in the water with sharks and whales than, than around people. Like that's all she wants to do and research. Her whole life is just about research and being in the water and just discovery. And when I ask her if, you know, if, uh, and if for her, so she said it's really hard for them because you need to raise money before you do that, before you get a chance. But her dream, if she could be in the water every single day doing research, that's all she would want to do. Which is incredible. Did you get to do any of that at all? No, I wish. That'd be cool. That'd be so cool. That'd be really cool. Um, what about space but, camp? Space camp? Did you have to do anything like that? No, but we, we had to, for zero gravity, we had to go to yoga. <laughs> Which I thought awesome. was really funny, so you can get your body all flexible and, and learn, uh, learn how you would be and move in zero gravity. And that was, for me, that was very challenging. That was very, because it's like almost like your body does a dance in its own way, you know. How'd they do that on the ship? Was, was the set have 
I guess like a wire work configuration? There was it? that. Yeah, there was wire work and there was yoga ball. So I did it twice where I had to be on my stomach and, you know, f floating and doing a scene. <laughs> And uh, that was really challenging. What did the set look like? Was it a fully realized yes. ship on a soundstage? Yes. Yes. That's what was incredible. I mean, when we saw the ship, because two weeks before we shot the film, we were doing a lot of rehearsals and a lot of discussing about, you know, how about science and scientists and doing all these different, you know, having all these discussions about it. And then Sebastian was telling us how he wants to shoot the film. So you have an idea, but you don't know until you see it. And you know, he's like, once you see it, you'll see it's a small ship, and you'll feel claustrophobic once you're in it. And it, it had that feel to it. So he would lock the door if we're doing this, and you would lock the door, and we're stuck in there, and you couldn't get out. They would have to help us get out. Was there any crew in there with you? No. That's what was so amazing. Like There was no crew except only the actors. And if Sebastian needed to give us notes, he would speak through a microphone, and it would come on on the speaker, you know. And what about the cameras? Were, were they just positioned and locked off? Yeah. Until you were so basically gone? there were um, there was uh, six surveillance cameras in one area and like three upstairs in a cockpit and um, they would, did not move unless, like, for instance, if in the scene, like, uh, you know, um, uh, someone wants to move the camera, then you could do that. But there were set cameras because was, there were like surveillance cameras. Um, and it was so, it was such, it was, it was such an amazing experience that I'll never probably get a chance to do again. Do you know it's what I mean? It's definitely very unique. It's very unique. It's very unique and it hasn't been done and I don't know if it's going to be done again because it's fun. How do you it's feel shattered. about found footage type movies in general? Because, you know, some people kind of judge them at this point no matter what they are but this is a very different approach to that. I, you know what? It's like, it, it's with anything. There's so much stuff that's been done so it's like, it just depends on the film. You know, I think, uh, th for me at least, that's what it comes down to. You can look at, there's so many stories that have been told, but each story is, so, is told differently, you know, and, and there's different ways. And I feel like art, the, the, the found footage in this film is very different than what we've seen before. So, I would definitely agree. And I've seen a lot right? of found footage films. Yeah, yeah. How did you feel about that helmet camera? Was it, was it literally a camera, like right in oh, your yeah. face? Oh, yeah. How big was the camera? What kind of camera was it? It was a small camera. It was like this big. That's not smaller than, than than this. It was just like like this, and it was it came out to here was like this on me, and um, so and did you have a helmet? Oh, I had the whole suit on, a fifty pound suit. It was it was heavy. It was it was definitely heavy, and uh, and but it also helped with the with the authenticity of being in the in, in those moments, even though um, I think it would be, um, but uh, yeah, it was it was interesting to have camera that, that, that close. Does that take you out of it at all? Like knowing that the camera is right there? You know it didn't because it actually I feel like it actually helped me because this was done if you know if the way I process it is like that's actually probably that's what would happen you know if they really went out there they would they would want to get all the footage possible so you know that's how I justified, at least for myself. So it wasn't weird, or I was just like, oh my god, this camera in my face, like so close. He was like, okay, I'm doing this. I'm what I'm doing, because I don't want to give too much away. Have you ever tried to put yourself in that mind frame? Because I kept thinking, you know, they go all this way. She's got to know she's taking a pretty major risk going yeah. out there. Mm. But at the same time, I kind of understand why she risks her life when they've traveled mm. all that way for that purpose. Do yeah. you ever wonder what you might do if you were really in that situation? Well, that's what was interesting. Um, you know, some people have asked me if, if I was asked to go on a mission, would I? And because having this experience and being in the in, in being on that spaceship and having an idea of, of of what they would go through or the claustrophobia of of being on that, um, I, I don't think I would ever. I, I don't think I could. I could do it. Do you think they knew before they went on the mission, like the the extreme extent it could go to? I think they always do. I think they always do because the the, the risk that you take take is quite high. Because you have to. Tr I mean, they don't have the technology today, but um, there's so many things that can go wrong, and you travel such enormous distances that you. And that's what's so amazing about also this film is like my favorite thing about this film is that you know it's it's a sci-fi film, but it's also a film about humanity, and it's about these people that 
you, you see them go on the journey and the risk their lives for, for research, for science. And I think anybody that does that is doing that. You have to, I, I believe you have to go with the notion that you, you probably won't come back. And then even more humanity is that we see the reaction on Earth after and those people that yeah. yes. made the mission happen and yes. it's such honest emotion and guilt on their part too. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. And, and that's what I love and also what I love about the film is, is how you know, a lot of in those, those genre films, the way it's, it's played, it's very dramatic. And I think because of the research that we did, and we talked about it a lot, about how science would truly would behave in, in certain circumstances that do happen. If somebody dies or if, the, if something breaks on a ship, it isn't like, oh my God, you know, it's, everything is so controlled. Everything, they've been so trained to approach things in such a, you know, in a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It would just be so thought out, and it would be reactionary. So, then that's what I love that the way the way everyone played the characters was a lot more authentic than than what I've seen in sci-fi films. If that makes sense. Absolutely. And and the scientists that that one of the scientists scientists that's what he told me that 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 when he watched it it was it was very authentic for him our performances of how we how we approach things that happen. And so that, I thought that was, I think that's the greatest compliment when the scientist is like, wow, you actually, I believed what, I believed the cast, I believed what you guys did, which is, it's just really cool. What was it like seeing the, the film cut together for the first time? Because you've got all that stuff that mm. you weren't involved in being shot. And mm. then, then there's also just, you know, the digital component of putting all those different security cameras together and seeing other people's individual portions. Is it what you expected it to be in the end or or? Well, I saw I saw a, a different cut of it, and then I saw this cut. That's 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 the final cut, and I love this cut. Um, and I, 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 it was it was to be honest with you, it was hard to imagine what it was going to look like. I had an idea, but it was hard to imagine because because there was six cameras going at once, and there's so many different angles you can get a scene from. So you I can't don't imagine have no, editing all that oh, footage. I could not, that's why it took them so many editors and so long to edit, because there's so much footage that they took. And you know, there could be a scene that you're doing. And for instance, like if you do a scene where it's like just the back of us, they decide to do that, then it becomes a, a very specific thing and a feel for it. So I have no idea what Sebastian was going to choose, what, how he was going to go. With, with, with the cuts because there's so much footage from different angles and I think he did such an incredible job. I'm, I'm really proud of him with what he did with it. And now to wrap up, how are you enjoying Comic-Con and what's the craziest thing you've seen so far? Um, it's, uh, well the craziest I think is, it was the panel. <laughs> how many people there was, it was pretty, pretty incredible. Uh, and I'm, yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. It's my first time here so I'm, very overly stimulated with everything around me. I'm just like, like a kid in a candy store, like just, just looking around and seeing all this, all these people and craziness.